Hello and welcome to the 48th episode of Rambling Weekly. We're going to talk a little bit about Christmas in certain ways and also its commercialization because ah, it's something I want to talk about. Bleh. <laughs> so we'll take a break and then we'll get right into it. Welcome back. That is Abedu, or Abel, from the character theme album of Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem character theme album from like 1990 and i have to say i think i got this randomly at like super potato or one of those sorts of things where i got it from a, a store not really knowing what to expect it is a 10 track album eight of them are these very different themes a sizable chunk of them are more in the softer tone like that but like uh, that's, that's, there's only eight of them so it's really, maybe more half and half it starts to skew into the <laughs> there'll be a couple of them here in the breaks but you're like wow that's a time period <laughs> When you hear it, you're like, holy crap. So, uh, yeah, that one's a rendition of the map background. Like, the first map background and stuff. It's nice nice and comfy, just like I want to be. Because everybody's about to get hit by a blizzard, evidently. So now you know what time <laughs> I'm recording this. I'm a little late recording this one this week. Part of that's because my day off is usually, like, a... I usually have like Saturday and a, a weekday off. My weekday off was a little earlier than what it normally is, so threw things for a little bit of a loop, but I'm here now doing this recording as the blizzard of forever dooms us to obscurity. I don't know. I'm fed up with already hearing this. Like, people are going gaga, and I just, I don't know. It's just like, whatever. It's... It's it's a little bit of snow. Certainly there are areas that are going to get hit a lot worse than where I'm at. So I guess from at least where I'm at, it feels like people are over cautious about it. It's it's really weird. I, I don't know. It's like you, you know where you live. This is going to happen. But every time it does tend to happen, every couple of years or so, people are like, oh my goodness. Ah. Well, even even like every year, it's like, oh my God, it's it's this. It's this. Got to go get this. And it's just like, calm, calm down. Calm it. And just... <laughs> Deep breath. Exhale. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, so I've been dealing with that. Work's been going all right. Just been busy with the the time of year that it is and all that sort of fun jazz. What else has been going on? I've been keeping consistent with putting out videos and stuff like that. I do have a stretch of time in the next handful of days. I'm going to have some time off. I am really hoping to have a rough draft done of the next book. So that's that's exciting. It's it's right there. It's so palpable. I can almost taste it. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> I I just have to buckle down and hopefully not get distracted and all that sort of fun jazz. And yeah, that, that would be really nice. It'd be a good step. I more so wished that I would have had it all done, but at least getting a rough draft on so I can print it off and do the edits and all that sort of wonderful process that I got to do afterwards. That'll be that'll be nice. Hopefully get that done in a proper amount of time instead of taking forever with it what else has been going on that that other than that really not too much wild wildness has been going on yeah i don't know electric bill went way up that was that was not exciting i'm not thrilled to be paying that for <laughs> for next month and it wasn't like i was overly using things but things just skyrocketed on that and i was just like ugh Ugh. I've been busy with that. I'm busy with work and been trying to stay busy with stuff. I, I sometimes I do fall into these bad habits of just going down rabbit holes that I shouldn't be going down. Where it's like, oh yeah, let me just read on this nonsense, and it's like, no, stop. <laughs> Put your foot down. Part of that also, I know, I have this bad habit of when I have something on in the background, I sort of get caught in this loop of 
keeping it going because I want to play it through. Like I, you know, I love Mystery Science Theater 3000 uh, or like Rift Tracks or something of the sort. And there's a ton of them. People were kind enough to record and and share the tapes. And while it's really great and it's a nice nice chuckle to have, sometimes you just gotta like be like, no, I gotta put my foot down and be like, no, taking care of business. Like I'm going through and I've played a decent amount of um, next game I want to review environmental station alpha I, i've been really actually really enjoy that game it, it has been fun to play through it it's got this if you like super metroid you'll probably like something like this and i've also been reading up on some of the reviews and a little bit of videos and stuff on this game and it's interesting to see how people take to it because there's a lot of just like eh it's basically like it's kind of well, not basically like but it's kind of like super metroid if you like exploring a sci-fi setting sort of thing this would be your jam like that's all you really need to say about it is that's that's the extent of it it's got this nice spookiness to it because you're going into this defunct station and you're this robot trying to determine what happened and everything and you're getting some of these clues and whatnot yeah there's i would say there's probably not probably there is a more there's more story to it than what is in super metroid i love that stuff i really like it and i think i've figured out why i like things like this as opposed to the castlevania side of things they really should not be called metroidvanias i mean at least it's nice that it's not called castleoids (laughs) it sounds really weird (laughs) i'm playing a castleoid hmm might want to go go to your doctor get that checked out <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh th- th- i would say that, like the big thing on it is just the damage and not damage but the experience leveling up leveling up ruins exploration and interactions and that sort of avenue for me it's there's just something about it that really just dampens the excitement and that i think is why a lot of those ex like uh the more metroid style castlevania games really don't do it justice and don't interest me as much if 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 there was more like what is in castlevania 2 where there's just kind of like maybe a small increment of health increases but you gotta like uh strengthen your whip certain ways or, or find items or something but not really a oh here's here's super duper oh you level up oh oh, oh you level up oh you level up oh you level up oh you level up i think that might play into it a little bit that's just me I, uh, there's there's something about it or maybe it is and I, i'm on, probably going to make like a little taylor's talk video about it but i think there's something to exploration where and it's a knock against it in uh, environmental but having places where you explore to but there's not really anything there so you think oh maybe there's something here there's and it ends up not being anything or you don't really get like some sort of neat reward or bo- like bonus or something like that or the reward isn't really like up to snuff i think there's something to that i kind of like the oh you went you know jrpgs have this a lot it's like oh you have two paths one leads to the boss but if you go down the other way you get a super de duper weapon that'll be very helpful for the for the uh for the boss fight and uh, it's kind of poopy i think sometimes the, you just kind of go down a route and you're like wow there's nothing here shoot <laughs> I don't know. That's why I really enjoy like the original Final Fantasy and stuff like that. It's like there's there's plenty of times you go somewhere and you're like, well, there is not much of anything here. Is that seriously a phone? Did I just hear a phone go off? <gasps> like I'm I'm using a temp phone, and of course the temp phone's got to go off. I cannot escape. The- well, I, I, I to be fair, it's it's been pretty quiet for the <laughs> for a few of these recordings. Anyways, yeah, I think there's something to the leveling up and also constant reward system i get it some people don't like the a a drip unless that drip is very consistent and some people like a deluge of rewards and stuff i i I can be fine without the rewards of oh i got to this random area that really doesn't have anything that's fine to me that's more interesting because then you're like okay then where are these things because i think that helps obfuscate it even more to some degree but that's just me that's me making the argument and that's for another thing entirely so uh yeah i think that's it i don't think i've really got much else to to add to that data <laughs> we'll get into the the topic of the capitalization onto death here after the break so stick around
Welcome back. That is Hardin or Harden, and it is like the close to victory theme thing or the victory theme. Victory theme is also in there. I think it's both both of them. The topic at hand, and that is capitalization unto death. So something about me, I actually really really like Christmas, but I I guess I should couch in my saying of I really like Christmas in the sense that I really like the spirit of Christmas. I like the environment of it. I like this sort of celebratory cheerfulness that, depending on when the season decides to hit proper, uh, to be able to be like, oh, it's snowing, it's it's gloomy, there's nothing, especially around here. Like, once winter hits and everything, even into, like, the back end of fall, it's nothing but eight times out of ten or four-fifths of the time. <laughs> it's this dreary overcast, and there's not a lot of bright, sunshiny days around until spring slash summer. The lights have this wonderful glow to them. I remember having nightmares for a stretch of time when uh, after Halloween because of what is that the uh, scary stories in the dark three or whatever there's this one about Harold the Scarecrow frightening because uh, one of like when I was a kid neighbor it was this elderly crotchety old man named Harold so I just thought he was gonna <laughs> find me and kill me and wear my skin kind of thing so uh but i had nightmares for that and then christmas came around and then had the the wonderful nice glow of the christmas tree and then my nightmares of of harold the scarecrow went bye-bye and everything also i have very very young recollection of getting an nes for christmas with a bunch of different games and everything uh, so that was that was nice Unfortunately, at least, like, there's there's probably another another time where that would hit really close to the same, and that was when I got my Nintendo 64, and that would have been, I would have been about 12 at the time, 12, yeah, I want to say 12, either, yeah, it would have been, been 12, got N64, Doom 64, uh, Shadows of the Empire, and Mario 64 for the games and stuff. And like, other than that, though, I've really not had a ton of, oh, here's a bunch of Christmas stuff here and there. There were pockets of things. I remember getting a telescope. That was also really, really cool. Not like some super de duper, like, oh my goodness, oh, amazing sort of thing, but, uh, you know, like a, a service little nice telescope that also had this really cool layout of the moon and its craters and stuff. That was, that was pretty neat. And I, I enjoyed it and used it. However, outside of like, yeah, now that I think about it, I think it was also the, nah, uh, because, yeah, my parents split, so there was like this, there's this hazy bit where it's like, ah, uh, you know, I remember vaguely one Christmas getting Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 well after, like, the Super Nintendo and stuff getting out, so that was, that was nice to get those. Beyond that, uh, yeah, I really don't have to too horribly many but more so than anything like as a kid yeah it's those christmas gifts that you're super like excited for but also i remember a lot of like family get-togethers that we would have and unfortunately for both sides of my family as time has marched on those have become not only less frequent but also not as uh populated <laughs> We'll say it's kind of kind of weird. There, maybe it's also just from being older and stuff. But it's just it feels like a lot of fragmentation has gone on, and I don't know what has caused that. I know on on one side of the family what has caused that, but on the other side, it's kind of weird that it's been such a a weird wonky lopsided thing to be like oh don't know if we can really do anything for it and, and stuff like that. it just gets just strange not to try to air out my nonsense and baggage and it's not even really baggage to me personally it's just it's something i've noticed is that there's not nearly as much family camaraderie <laughs> in the same sort of sense of like it's one of those things where the my generation of family is like, ah, if you you need anything, you could totally reach out. We'll we'll get you. We got you. Your family kind of thing. But it's not the same sort of, I guess, get together. It's it's almost it's like it's very. I don't know if it's just because of the the internet having phones like having the access of of being able to connect, but also having that constant access seemingly makes it less likely to be a thing it's like it's like oh we have all this access but we're not going to abuse it i don't know there's just it's just i guess it's one of those weird things more more importantly spirit of christmas so yeah it is nice to get those gifts but like i said growing up that's 
parents split when I was pretty young, and so there was, I guess, quote unquote, more of a chance and opportunity for Christmas gifts because there's now have I'm technically having two Christmases. How exciting is that? But for the most part, outside of a, a couple of those instances, and them all being not all of them, but majority of them being game related, it doesn't quite hit nearly as hard at least nowadays for me. However, it also kind of turns into this thing where it's at a certain point, I really just stopped getting gifts partially because we, it was not, not a thing that was easily affordable. So it became a thing once I was kind of hitting my mid teens to be like, I don't worry about me so much. Just get, get them stuff. I don't really need anything. I'm pretty, (laughs) I'm, I'm pretty simple. I'm a pretty, pretty cheap person. Uh, I don't of course, there's sometimes where it can be like, ah, oh, I would really like that, but that's also super expensive. It's it's like I'm on the extremes. I'm like, I can be very, very, very miserly, but then it's like, man, I really would like this thing, but this thing is like stupidly expensive. Eh. So I just go the miserly route because stupid expensive thing will cause me troubles. Not a good idea. <laughs> So, like, I have this kind of weird back and forth with with Christmas early on in in life to the point where I was just like, you know what, like. Uh, whatever me personally i and i've i've i know i've explained this to people like as a thing but um i you can hear my washing washing machine how my dishwasher my dishwasher is now draining (laughs) anyways i have this weird mentality in that i don't i am not a big fan of this you see this like this you see that how grossly it is capitalized on uh, for the holidays you see it with christmas you see it with valentine's day fourth of july halloween where it is this push 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 to bye 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 these things thing things and i mean to some degree it probably has the tinge of trying to twist your arm well it's like well if you don't buy this does christmas really count this year well if you don't buy this are you really celebrating fourth of july kind of thing that i like you see it with sweetest day all these sorts of things they're important however the importance isn't to buy some sort of nonsense that goes with it it is more to the like effect of celebrating the stuff right like <laughs> like you don't need to put yourself in a money hole just to be able to celebrate something that's the same way i feel when it comes to any sort of expression of gratitude or love and that sort of thing like i cannot I, tell you how much it incenses me that it's like oh coming up is sweetest day make sure you've got the proper whatever the whatever you need to uh tell that loved one you really care, love and care for them right and it's like no you do that the not only on the sweetest day but you do that 365 days a year 366 on leap year it bothers me to no end that people will hold off on expressing their feelings for something or some you know so, or someone until the day of something just because it's like well it's sweetest day huh? and unfortunately it has a, a negative blowback effect on me in that when a holiday can come around and stuff i've got this deadened legend heart of just kind of like ah, it's just another day which is stoically people give me the thumbs up but the and even then they don't because that's just not what a the, the stoicism those silly goobers <laughs> that's that's not something no it's just like oh yeah 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 you got it it's like no it's it's not a great it, i mean it, it it's certainly a way to go through life and cope in its own wonderful ways it, it creates this weird <laughs> like i i can only imagine my coworkers are like man there's just something off about him <laughs> Just, just like not in a, uh, he's, he's like weird, creepy, just I'm theatrical, theatrical, but it's not like it, it, but instead we get, we get this grinding of the millstone of, of all these sorts of things, especially like, I think to some degree it may have lessened a bit with, with Christmas. I, I, maybe because people, I, I think part of that is through pivoting and my, my brother has, I think done this because of this, like he doesn't like it. So instead he pivots towards Thanksgiving as a better expression of saying, Hey, I care for you. I am grateful that you are in my life. I think that he, he's went that way. I think for myself, at least when it comes to Christmas, it's just like, ah, you know, you just kind of be cheerful and everything cheerful anyways, you know, but just kind of celebratory cheerful hey getting through the new year getting through uh, another year uh have fun with it and don't get stuck into the oh man i need to get this new thing i need to buy the new and exciting to make sure that uh my my child doesn't hate me for all of 
you know, however long. That's just a, a horrible mindset to have of, oh my goodness, my child is going to hate me if I don't buy this. I need to find a way to make this work. And thankfully for when it came to my parents, it was like, hey, we're too poor for this. You can wish all you <laughs> wish in one hand, poop in the other. Tell me which one fills up first. Kind of <laughs> There's not a lot of not a lot of hope going through in that in the sense of oh i'm gonna really get something like i in a certain way it, it it sucks yeah you're like wow yeah i don't get the shiny thing because i will say this if you everything in moderation right because if you if you don't unless you've developed some very like strong willed thing i think you see it also with like uh to some degree I, everybody's different of course but and even in what sort of environment they grow up in like the the amish will have i don't know what it's called but they they generally have that time where they may leave the community and become ensnared in all sorts of wonderful pleasurable traps of society outside of their community and i think it's a similar thing yeah you can certainly grow up in a stern environment in the sense of just not having a lot however that's while that may shape you it it also it hardens you in ways that'll cause cracks in the foundation for sneaky stuff stuff to uh, kind of slither its way in and make you a bit more brittle and susceptible to i remember it was like being getting in the situation of like oh yes i am totally good and it's like no no, it's just like you're just as susceptible to all these sorts of other things. In fact, you might even be more so because kind of like the, the person who goes through the desert and is really, really thirsty and doesn't have anything to drink. The moment they find some water to want to drink, they just want to drink it all down. It's like you can't do that. You got to gotta go slow. got to gotta sip at it. got <laughs> to gotta sip at it like truthfully like i you know talked about this in the the drone advertisement nonsense uh how many episodes ago? it was like a couple episodes ago let me take a look just two episodes ago how forgetful am i uh, it is always an attempt to try to siphon some sort of money out of people in anything it feels like oh there's a sale going on oh there's this going on oh there's this and you know and it is what it is whether rightly or wrongly i mean you see where it's going it's not going to a good place partially because it just go it gets top heavy and then once it's just siphoning all this money out of people yeah where do you go from there right you see how it will poison or not even poison because it could poison it how it just makes things bland and just sort of stales a lot of the fun and interesting sorts of things that goes on something we did last year with uh, my mother and, and my sister was we decided to sure we'll, we'll celebrate Christmas we'll get each other a gift but the stipulation was is that we get each other a gift of something that we already have like us personally that somebody that the other person would get better use out of or would maybe appreciate and be able to use more than, than us. And I think that that is a certainly a way to go about if you want to try to like pivot away from to some degree the buying monster if you're if you're concerned for that sort of thing but i think it's also a good way to just not necessarily unload things because you're also you yourself are getting things so it's it's more of i have these things and you can't enjoy everything that you have all at all at once there's you only have so much time you only have so much energy you only have so much attention and that dissipates really really quickly it's just eh. Yeah, and it was just a, a nice, fun exercise, and I think it was, it was a good way to go about doing it. Because, like I said, I like the spirit of things as opposed to the what is turned into in a in a money sense. Like I get it; it's a little bit harder with something like Fourth of July, where you're buying a bunch of foodstuffs to eat with everybody else. However, that's the same thing with Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving kind of has avoided that to some degree of getting bombarded with it, but it's still there. The nature of it's still there. There. but it's it's less you're not like setting off fireworks and stuff unless you're one of those weirdos that's setting off fireworks at that time i don't know there's just something that kind of like makes it a bit less colorful when it's like oh buy this new vehicle for your loved one and it's like well, a wow it like that sort of mindset <laughs> That's the, I'm not a part of that whatsoever. I, I have never been to afford, be able to afford such luxuries, we'll say. 
<laughs> I don't know. The machine in that regard, I can't do nothing about it individually. Like I can do what I can, you know, I can only control what I can control. There are going to be plenty of people who are like, yes, I... I don't care. I want to buy this sort of thing. And that's how they express their, potentially, that's how they express their care for somebody else. And, you know, you if that's how more and more people are, then there's really not much you can do about that, right? I think the only only way to really combat sort of that insatiable, I don't want to say greed per se, but just that insatiable consumer mentality is to have something absolutely catastrophic in the sense of, like, the stock market crash or, yeah, the... Not so roaring 30. I don't remember what those were called. What is it? The, the Great Depression kind of thing. Once you start hitting into into that, and that's really the only way, because it's it's and it's an a, a environmental thing that causes that change. If there is no necessity for it, then people are going to take the route with the least resistance. Unfortunately, to be that sort of stern austere is that the word i want to use say austere uh that like austere sort of spending and, and whatnot because that's a lot more work than it is to be like oh easy come easy go i got some money and then it and then it goes out kind of thing that's just a bad spot and then you can you know you can point to all sorts of other issues and troubles and whatnot that we really we bring up the troubles and issues and stuff but uh, it's similar to like if you have a problem and you bring up the problem it just feels like it makes the problem much worse instead of just finding a way to navigate around it or fix said problem because sometimes that's what you just need to do is just navigate around a problem <laughs> sometimes you just kind of like eh, it doesn't need to be fixed it needs to be forgotten <laughs> just with, with this sort of thing it's like hey you might i don't uh, like there's not really good solutions to the problem so yeah we're just kind of spinning our wheels more and more and more Oh no. I mean, you see this with just a lot of stuff, really. Just this sort of mm, amoeba action when it comes to cultural things. It's like, oh, this thing's interesting, and then we're just gonna like absorb it, and then once it's metastasized into the, the system, it's like, okay, it's not important, it's lame, new thing, and then it just kind of goes into it, and then it just puts it into the ground. Similarly to how it's like every movie idea and everything has to have the potentiality of all sorts of movies and stuff like this and then like the, the multiverse and all this guy it's like go away just stop this is annoying this is not this is not interesting this is just bleh bleh it, it, it comes from a very hollow place it feels like and that's not to say that people who are working on it are not creative it's more of i don't know it's when you're when you're kind of going through beats and rhythms without really having much of a sense of purpose for it that it comes across as hollow. And I think there's something to be said about heart in something. So that's why, like, even if you like buy something, if, you, if there's a intention behind it, it can be a very quote unquote cheap gift. But it, the the heart behind it is like, oh, you know, I know this person who really likes this sort of thing and this sort of th you know what, it, what whatever that may be. And it's there's this really cool cup that I found and I bought it. And they really like collecting cups and stuff. And so you know that sort of thing. When, when what have you eh, i mean it works out or you know maybe try a hand at making the thing yourself it might not turn out <laughs> it might not quite look how you want it but i think there'd certainly be appreciation for putting in the effort to to make it i don't know where i was i, I had a direction i kind of wanted to go before i even started recording this and then of course the moment i turned the mic on my brain wanted to go and pivot into a slightly different direction. So <laughs> that's all we got for today. Merry Christmas. <laughs> We're going to take a break and then uh, go into a quote. So stick around.
Welcome back. That tune there is uh, Medius there. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. That certainly sounds like some some 80s or 90s <laughs> TV sitcom. <laughs> Stepped onto the set of Seinfeld or something. <laughs> it's a rendition of one of the battle themes. Cool stuff. Quote for today, for this episode, I had it and then I lost it because I am a goober. Oh no. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? Ah, found it. So this one here is from Frederick Nietzsche and I picked this one because I know how edgy boy McEdgy nihilist and everything Nietzsche tends to get and uh, I wanted to pick a more bright quote and that is we should consider every day lost on which we have not danced at least once. And we should call every truth false, which was not accompanied by at least one laugh. That first part, at least, is a bit brighter than the, the back half. The back half can be kind of taken at a few different different ways there. Yeah, I mean, you can, I want to say it's Thucydides has that quote, don't misinterpret meaning for truth, or uh, don't conflate meaning for truth kind of thing. Or don't conflate truth for meaning. I want to say it's don't conflate truth, uh, meaning for truth. But anyways, uh, more so the first part. I really am like, yeah, that's that's a. I do I do goober dances. At least I, I not not. <laughs> I try not to do them too much in public. But uh, just uh, you gotta have you gotta have fun with life. And uh, even if dank nihilist meme Nietzsche is able to mention that, I think I th I, I and I. I less think and more hope that people themselves will, will do that so that is going to be it for for me on this episode celebrate christmas have a merry christmas uh if you don't well uh, i hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend week and all that sort of fun jazz and uh, enjoy the week to come and yeah we'll catch you next week thanks for listening and before uh, before running out the song that we're playing out to is uh sheeta it is the i want to say it's the, one of the battle themes let me double check oh nope i fibbed it's the beginning of the map the map like the startup map like seeing it all and everything and uh all that fun jazz so i was a fibber anyways still a good tune it'll do anyways have fun and i'll see you next week later bye